great. Thank you. So we've heard in the last panel, what is your superpower? And that was my, the first question I got when I did my interview at Snapchat, which I obviously answer with, well, that's, I'm French. There's no higher superpower than that. <laughs> I got the job, so the joke landed well, so that was great. Um, what I love about this question is that you can ask the same thing to brands and companies. And while for some it's very obvious what the answer would be, for some others, it might be a little harder, especially if you're not a user. Look, if you are older than 35, 40, you're less likely to have Snapchat on your phone. And therefore, you're less likely to know anything about Snap. Yet, more than 110 million Americans are on Snapchat every single month. So, when Brent Innovator asked me to come speak at this conference, I took a look at the RSVP list, and I saw that there were gonna be quite a bit of people in their late 30s. So, I thought, I'm going to build an eight minute crash course on Snapchat. So that in eight minutes from now, you'll be Snap experts, even though you don't have Snapchat on your phone. Deal? Deal. Yeah. All right. So, my name is Julian, and as of two weeks ago, I'm the head of integrated, uh, uh, integrated marketing at, at Snap. <coughs> Let me start by sharing with you what I share with my 3,000 friends. My perfect family, my perfect vacation, and most recently, the perfect picture at the U.S. Uh, embassy where I got my U.S. citizenship. Thank you. Thank you. How can I, I can now say croissant, like a real American. <laughs> That's more of the test. Um, we all do this. We all choose to take the top 10% of our lives and share it with the masses. And why is that? It's because people interact and communicate vastly differently, depending on degrees of closeness. What you share with the world is going to be different than what you share with your 1,000 friends. And it's going to be very different than what you share with your core group of people, with the people that are at your wedding, the people that are in your wedding. And for me, it looks like this. When I get personal good news, when I get a raise, which to my boss in the audience, this is kind of a whole snap, so just, just saying. Um, when I do the mundane, when I eat a bag of Cheetos, I send that to my best friends. Nobody else cares about that. The hard stuff, when my son is walking after a heart surgery, I don't want to broadcast that to a thousand people. When I'm in vacation, I'm actually kind of miserable because my kids are acting like lunatics, but there is no way I'm not gonna put a beautiful sunset on Instagram. I send that to my friends. When I goof around with, with lenses, or when I put a bold lens on my three-year-old, there is absolutely no way my wife would let me share that on, 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 on broad, broad social network. All of these are snaps, because I use snap to connect with my real relationships. And I'm not the only one. As a matter of fact, 75% of people come to Snapchat to interact with the closest circle of family and friends. And that is very different than other social media platforms, popular with Gen Z and millennials. That is going to be Snapchat's superpower. Real relationships and connecting people. This is our ethos. Enhancing relationship between friends, family, and the world. Look, Snapchat is where you don't have to be popular or perfect. We like to say that we are, in a way, the antidote to mindless scrolling and negativity on social media. And because of that, and that might come as a surprise for many people in the late 30s who don't have Snapchat. Snap has been growing. If you thought Snapchat was cool in 2015, we've quadrupled the number of users since then. In terms of monthly users, we have now twice the amount of 
monthly users that Twitter did at its heyday, twice. But in a world where everyone is growing, how does that compare to other social media apps? Where for the first time in many years, Snap is back. Snap is back at the top of the growth compared to the other big social media network. This is a tweet from the Wall Street Journal about a month ago showing that Snap is growing faster than Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and Facebook. And you heard me say it a few minutes ago, there are now as many people on Snapchat in the US every month that are watching the Super Bowl. We basically have Super Bowl on Snapchat every single month. And if you're wondering well, who makes that, that, that 110 million, 10 and 10 million people, well, so tell two stories. On one hand, you have Gen Z. 90% of Gen Zs are on Snap. Ask any 21-year-old how they communicate with your friends, it's unanimous. But in a world where there are only 60 million Gen Z, where are the other 55 million coming from? Well, 56% of Snapchatters are actually 25 and older. And that is what is so interesting because we see brands using Snapchat to really target Gen Z's, but we also see brands using Snapchat to target millennials, the 25 to 34 trenches. And if you double click into the Snap age breakout, again, that may come as a surprise. There's only 15% of teenagers. 85% of Snapchatters are actually 18 and older. So, look, Snap is very unique. Hopefully at that point I made, I made my case. Why do you care about that uniqueness? Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> um, that difference is a new advantage in three different ways. The first one is through unduplicated reach. Because it is so unique and differentiated from any other platforms, you're going to have people that are on Snap that are not on other platforms. The way to read this is, I'm going to take TikTok for example, is 43% of people, of daily Snapchatters, people on Snapchat every day, are not on TikTok every day. They might be every other day, they might be there once a week, but they're not every day on both platforms. The second one, which I'm actually the most proud of and happy with, because I'm working, at Snapchat is that in a world where I do, I do it too, mindless scrolling for an hour, I don't feel fantastic about it after that. Because Snapchat is all about connecting with your friends and seeing your friends' stories, even if it's seeing them eating a bag of Cheetos or Lay's. 91% of Snapchatters feel happy when using Snapchat. And because of that, and that's the third point, Study shows, and we have a million data points on this, so I try to dumb it down because I only have eight minutes. Um, study shows that people pay more attention to Snap, to ads on Snapchat, and it makes sense because you're watching your friends' stories, you're actively engaging in AR, so you're paying attention to what you see. And the second point is that you remember branded content because, again, you're not scrolling through a million different videos, you're just looking through your friends' stories, so you're actually not skipping anything. That's why I would like to say that real relationship, the bedrock of Snapchat, equals real influence for brands. And now the two minutes that I have left, I'm going to really simplify on how. So how do you do this? How do you drive performance on Snapchat? It's only three slides. And again, it really depends on what your goals are. So this is a broad generalization. But, if you're not familiar with the system, it's through three things. Snap ads, which is skippable ads. Unskippable ads, and AR. Those three, this combination, is going to drive performance. And look, before joining Snap, I was working at Frito-Lay for seven years, and I've always loved AR for two things. A, because there is no forced AR. Anybody who plays with the lens decided they wanted to play with that lens. And when you have millions of people deciding, I'm going to play with the Charmin Bear lens and play with it for 30 seconds, 
you're going to drive an emotional connection. I've played with that lens for about 20, 30 seconds. And now every time I go to a store and I see the bear, I have a little smirk on my face. One day my wife was like, are you smiling at toilet paper or paper towel? I was like, yeah, we go way back with the bear. I like the bear. I play with the bear. That I feel an emotional connection much more than any forced views that they would have put on me. So I love, I love AR. But again, as a smart marketer, you have to balance efficiencies and effectiveness. So this is the magic formula. Skippable ads for efficiency, about 70% of the mix, and 30% for AR and unskippable ads. Media performance and brand building. And this is a quick example, best in class example, of what Milagro did for the Day of the Dead. Skippable ads, unskippable ads, and great AR for people to play with. And this drives results. I'm not going to dive into this because um, I'm up four times, but in terms of brand lift, sales lift, penetration lift, ROAS, new brand barriers, the results are here. Just try it for yourself. I'm going to leave you with one thing, is this slide. A, you know, now know that Snapchat superpower is about real relationships. And that real relationships begets large, happy, and growing community. That real relationships equals real influence and real performance for brands. And how do you do this? Simply with a mix of vertical video and augmented reality. And voila, eight minutes later, you are now Snapchat Pro. Thank you.